we're going to look at a few transformations uh, of the sine graph, and we're going to introduce a few terms that apply just to periodic functions like, like this one here. Okay, so you should all have this picture in front of you, and we're just going to talk a little bit about it. Um, so we talked about what this 2 does to the sine graph. It multiplies the y values by 2, and sine normally goes from 1 to negative 1, uh, but now you'll notice that the graph of this one goes from uh, negative 2 to 2. And so you'll notice that that means that the max value of this, uh, of this function is equal to 2, and the minimum value is equal to negative 2. So the reason I mentioned that is because um, it's going to help us identify this term here, which is the amplitude. The amplitude is essentially the height of our function, um, but not the full height. So what I mean is by the height is how high, how um, the distance it is from this midline here. Now this midline, it turns out, right, this horizontal line, which is just y equals zero. Um, turns out to be what's called the average value of the function. It, uh, for of the sine graph, okay? It's the one that's right through the middle. And you've, we've taught, you know what, si um, what average value means. You know what average means. It's like when you, for instance, it's a, um, it's a measurement of the central uh, tendency of, of data. So like if I give you a couple of test scores, you would add them together and divide by two um, to get the average. So this midline is the average. So the distance from the midline to the max value or from the mid value is two. So that's called the amplitude. So we're going to write that the amplitude is the distance from the average value, and by the way, the average value of the function, I should say, in this case, in this case is equal to zero, because y equals zero uh, is the equation of this line. The distance from the average value to the maximum value it's also the distance to the minimum value as well. Right, it's the same, because of the symmetry of this graph. Uh, over the, well, not, not quite symmetrical, but it goes up as, as high as it goes down below. So the amplitude is often denoted uh, absolute value of A. And so, so the A value here, if we, look at a, if we look at our sort of our general case, our A value is a 2, and the absolute value of 2 is 2. Now the reason the absolute value is important is because sometimes A can be negative, but the amplitude is always positive. So I'll write always positive. It's never negative. Because it's a distance. And the one way to compute it is to take um, your max value, subtract your minimum value, and then divide by 2. So that works in our case because you look at this example, the amplitude, the max value is 2. If you minus the minimum value, minus negative 2, and then divide by 2, you get 4 over 2, which equals 2, Okay, which is also the absolute value of, of A. <clears throat> now, period we've already talked about. So we could, we could have figured out the period from this function right away, even if we didn't have the picture. If you look at the picture, the length of one cycle is right here. So the period is 2 pi over 3. So we have a formal definition of period, but I'm going to write length of one cycle. And you may have noticed that there is a formula for it, and it's not really, it shouldn't be too surprising because when we're, if we're going to graph this function, right? We're going to divide our x values by 3. And the period 
the period of the normal uh, sine graph, you know, y equals just sine of x. The period is 2 pi. So the period of this guy is going to be, well, we're going to divide that 2 pi by 3, and we're going to get the period of this function. Just based on what we know about transformation. So the period is 2 pi over, in the general case, whatever that b value is. Okay, so um, and it's so it's easy. The period is easy to compute because it just it, you compute it when you're graphing the function to begin with. All right, but the period is going to be two pi divided by our b value. And last but not least, we'll talk about what the frequency is. So sine and cosine graphs are often used to model phenomena in the real world, such as radio waves and sound waves and um, there are a lot of things that can be mo then, uh, modeled by, by sine graphs. The frequency in those cases is like how many, how many cycles occur every second. So that's, that's the physics sort of definition of frequency. We're going to write here uh, the number of the number of cycles. that occur over a given interval. Uh, the number of cycles that occur over a given interval. So look at our picture here. The interval goes from zero, well, it goes from negative two pi to two pi, but let's just look from just look from zero to two pi. How many, I'm going to highlight it, how many cycles of a graph occur from zero to two pi? We can count. There's one, there's two, there's three. So there's three cycles that occur on the interval zero to two pi. Notice there's a 3 there, so that that number sort of gives us information about the number of repetitions. But we don't just write 3, right? Our frequency we're going to write is, our frequency is, well, there were 3 cycles every time uh, we went over an interval of 2 pi, okay? but that's just in this case. In general, that b value would be take the place of the 3. So the formula for our frequency is b divided by 2 pi. OK, so there's frequency. It's, 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 um, it, it tell, the numerator basically tells you how many repetitions, and the denominator is on, the in, on whatever interval. So 3 over 2 pi was our frequency for this one. Should write that up here. Our frequency, our frequency here was is uh, three divided by two pi, and our period was uh, two pi over three. So you'll notice that the period and the frequency have an interesting relationship. They're reciprocals. So once you have one, it's easy to get the other. Okay, so these are three key definitions, and uh, we'll be using these again next time.